Hello, I'm Amanda Call, and today I'm going to be talking about how to use and care for nib pens. After my brush care video, I got a few requests asking if I could do a video about nib pens, so I figured, yeah, sure, why not? And uh, here it is, we're going to talk about nib pens. I really love nib pens. I love using them. I love the way that they look. They were actually one of the first mediums that I really, really took to and spent a lot of time developing my skills at. I was always a huge fan of the works of Edward Gorey and like 19th century etchings, although obviously those are not actually pen and ink. Those are something different, but they look a lot like pen and ink work, so there's a similar aesthetic appeal there. For a long time, nib pen was actually my primary medium, the thing that I spent the most time learning how to develop my skills at and incorporating into my own artwork, especially because I hadn't really learned how to use a brush yet, which would later become a big part of my ink artwork. The learning curve on a brush is much steeper than that of a pen, and we'll go over a little bit of why a little later on. But first, before we go too much farther, let's go over some nib pen basics. What exactly is a nib pen? Hold on one second, let me get one for you. These are a type of pen that do not have any ink contained inside of them. Uh, it's just a handle and a piece of metal. There's no ink in here. What you do is you take the pen and you dip it into a little reservoir of ink, like an ink bottle or pot, and then you write with whatever stays contained in the tip. Let's take a closer look. A nib pen is made of two basic parts, the handle and the nib. The nib is a small metal piece that is specially shaped to pick up, hold, and distribute ink. They come in lots of different shapes and sizes, depending on the quality of line they produce and amount of ink they hold. The nibs are sold as separate pieces and are removed from the handles and replaced as they wear out. There's a few standard sizes of nibs and handles, so you can mix and match and be pretty sure of them fitting together. You'll usually see these couple of basic plastic handles, but you can also buy fancy wood, metal, or glass ones, and they'll still have the same size opening on the end to attach your nibs. I like these wooden ones because they're a little fatter and easier to hold. There is an absolute universe of different types of pen nibs out there that you can use and experiment with. At this point for my own comic work, I really only ever use two anymore. And those two are the 107 nib, which is what I use for doing all of my actual drawing and detail work and that sort of thing, and the school nib, which is what I use for lettering. I will put links down below so that you can check out those two different nibs. Regardless of the type of nib that you have, there's a handful of things that are going to be the same pretty much all the time when you're using them. One of the things that you need to consider when you're first setting out to start using your pen nibs is your paper. Not every type of paper is going to be appropriate for use with a nib pen. You're gonna want to prefer to go with something that's a little bit smoother, not something that's really toothy. Like a lot of drawing papers have a lot of that kind of like toothiness, that rough fibery kind of surface to them. And that you don't really wanna use because those little rough fibers will actually get ripped up by the tip of your pen and get kind of gunked up in there, make it harder for your pen to work, cause your pen to drag the fibers around <laughs> covered in ink and make a big mess. Um, and cause the ink to bleed on your page. There are actually papers made specifically for use with pen and ink, and those are fine. Sometimes I like using them. Most of the time, like for comic pages, I'm just using a smooth bristle, a smooth surface bristle rather than a vellum surface bristle. The vellum has more of that rough, toothy cover to it. There's also lots of different types of ink. And some of it is made specifically to use with pens and some of it isn't. And what you end up using really is a matter of preference and a little bit of experimentation as well. Personally, I've come to the point where while the Winsor & Newton Black India ink is my favorite for using with a brush, I find it just a little bit too sticky gooey to use with pen nibs. So what I've been using with pen nibs recently is the Royal Talons India ink. It is still nice and dark and opaque, but it's just a little bit thinner, so it tends to flow through the pen nibs a little bit better than the Winsor & Newton, which is just a little bit heavier bodied and kind of gets jammed up in there sometimes. There are tons of different brands out there, and I know a lot of people swear by other brands as well, so really you need to just try a few different things and see what works for you and what works best with the pens that you are using. So let's see how we actually use the pen. Similar to when we were going over how to use a brush, you're gonna start with your little pot of ink. 
you're gonna dip it in, but you're not gonna jam it all the way down in there until you touch the bottom, unless your bottle's almost empty, which... Go, go, get a new bottle. Put, use it until it's like halfway full, and then dump what's left in this one into that one, so you don't waste any ink. But don't, don't, don't try to use the last little drops out of the bottle. They're not designed to work very well that way. So you dip it in there. You really don't want to dip the entire thing all the way up to where it connects. You don't want to fill that whole belly all the way up because then that's a little bit too much. You have run the risk of ink dripping out of it. So you just want to dip it in until you get it a good way up toward the top there, toward that little reservoir. You can get it to where it starts to fill the reservoir. You can see how it's filled in the little hole there, but you do not want that belly to be completely full because then you run the risk of that big old fat drop of ink that's hanging on there just dripping out. We don't want that. If it looks like you got a little too much, just kind of wipe it off on the edge of the bottle. When you actually use the pen, you're gonna hold it just like you would a pencil, whatever your natural grip is on the pencil. The only thing you need to be careful though when you're using it is Pen nibs have to be used directionally. So what that means is you always want to be pulling them along the paper. You do not ever want to be pushing them as you make a mark. You can push with a pencil. That's fine. It's not going to bother it. You can push with a brush. That's totally fine. You don't want to push with a pen nib. You always want to be pulling your line. And let me show you why. Yeah, that's why we don't do that. <laughs> Not only are you gonna make a mess, you're gonna rip up your paper, you, you could bend the tip of your nib, like just you, just, you just don't want to. Keep pulling. Whenever you're using it, you want to be pulling. What this means in practice is that as you're using it, you're also going to have to move your paper around to different angles to facilitate always pulling, because if you need to go like over this way if it's more natural for your hand to go in a direction like that then you're just gonna have to flip the paper around so that you can do it like that don't be afraid to whip that paper around to any angle that's gonna work for you different pen nibs are gonna make lots of different types of marks too which is part of the fun of experimenting with them and trying different ones some of them make bigger lines depending on the pressure that you apply or thinner lines. Some of them don't do that at all if they're a very stiff pen. It really depends on what kind of nib you have, and that kind of playing around is how you discover which nibs work best for what you're trying to achieve. Periodically as you work, as you start to realize, oh, I'm starting to run out of ink and I'm going to have to reload every once in a while, just like with the brush, what you're going to want to do is have a little jar of water nearby and just dip the tip of it. Don't dip it in to the handle. Just dip the little metal part of the nib don't dip the handle in the water. Don't do it. Just dip that in the water so that most of the ink comes off. Take your little bench towel and just dry it off thoroughly. Make sure you got all the water off. Sometimes I even kind of like press the end to make sure there's no ink or water hiding in that tip there. And then you can dip it back in the ink and keep going. Most of the cleaning that your nib pen will need will actually happen while you are working on it. That periodic dipping into water and wiping it off with your paper towel is really most of what you're going to need. An interesting fact though is that nibs actually need to be cleaned before you use them. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Brand new pen nibs actually have a kind of oily coating on them for when they're manufactured. So when you first take them out of the package, if you dip them in something like ink, what you'll notice is the ink is kind of beading up on the surface of the pen rather than entering into the channels like it's supposed to. That's because it's still covered in that oil from ma being manufactured, and it's not going to work this way. You've got to actually wash it off with soapy water in order to get that oily coating off and for your pen nib to work. Well, periodically cleaning your nib off while you're using it, using just the water and paper towel method, and then doing the same thing at the end of your work session, will keep it pretty clean and usable for a long time. It's not really going to get everything, and therein lies my deep shame. You see, I'm really bad 
at keeping up with deep cleaning on my pen nips. Part of this is just because, I mean, I use them a lot, and so they tend to get dull long before they get gummy. You see, pen nibs are not something that you keep forever. I'll keep this handle probably for years and years and years and years, but the nib itself gets replaced after so many hours of working with it because the metal tip actually starts to dull over time, and you're not going to get as fine a line out of it anymore. And so, you replace these periodically. Obviously, I get as much life of, out of them as I can before I replace them. Um, and so I tend to typically burn through the sharpness of the nib before I run into issues of it being too covered in built up ink to continue working. I really should be better about it. I really should clean these more often. And so, uh, in service of that, I purchased some pen cleaner. <laughs> This is from Speedball. It came very well recommended. Um, Speedball also makes a lot of a lot of uh, handles and nibs and stuff. You usually see like sets of them in art supply stores. Those are usually from Speedball. We're going to try to rescue some of my sad, gunky pen nibs. We'll, we'll give that a shot today. So it looks like we're uh, in the bathroom again to do some cleaning. So. I've got my, my various um, filthy little pen nibs here. You can see that there's a fair amount of ink built up down in there. That's where the nib connects to the handle, and that's what's gotten kind of gross over time. You can see where that's kind of built up uh, and gotten really gunky, because like I said, I don't dip the handle down into the water when I'm cleaning these when I work, because uh, I don't want it to get all rusty and, and corroded up in there, because the water doesn't really have a way to get out. But uh, ink still manages to wick its way up in there on occasion, so that's what we're going to try to clear up. I've got, oh, I also have one pen handle, one of my wooden ones that has gotten exceptionally gross. I don't know if I can use the pen cleaner on wood or if it'll ruin it, but we'll find out because the nice thing about this pen handle is that it's actually double-ended, so even if I completely ruin this end, I can still use this end. So that's good. So I've got my bottle of cleaner here and dire direction directions. Soak all parts to be cleaned in the pen cleaner for 30 minutes, then flush with warm water repeat if necessary. So I guess we will give that a try. I'll open it up. This probably doesn't want to like get in your eyes or anything, I would guess. I've got a little jar here, a little baby food jar, because I don't want to just dip things in here and ruin this entire thing of pen cleaner, so I'm just going to put some of it in here. Should just be enough to cover my nibs. Drop them in. We'll, we'll set that up and we'll be back in 30 minutes and see how it goes. Okay, it's been like half an hour. Let's see how this worked. Um, everything still looks kind of gross. Maybe the magic comes in the rinsing? Oh, oh no, I see some, I see bits that have come off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish these out of here. Come on, I don't want to dump the pen cleaner out in case I need to give them another go. This is so frustrating. Oh, no, don't go down the sink. Now we rinse. Let's say that's not doing a whole lot. Maybe we need to scrub a little too. Let's get a little grubby. Oh, the scrubbing. The scrubbing is doing it. Now it's really, it's really coming off of there. Whoa, whoa, a ton of that just came off of here. Okay, it really helps with the handle actually. I'm making a mess. I'm gonna have to clean my bathroom again. A ton of ink came off of this, so I guess that's in pretty good shape. There's still a fair amount kind of down in there, but these guys are still pretty they're still pretty scummy. There's still an awful lot of ink on them, so I think I'm gonna give them another go around. The bottle does say to repeat if necessary. I'm feeling that it's pretty necessary, so I'm gonna put them in for another 30 minutes and then try this again a little later. So when I finally got back to this, so it was after supper and my kids were running around the house and being loud, so uh, I'm just gonna spare you the audio from this and give you a little voiceover. As you can see, a lot more ink came off of everything. And with a lot more scrubbing, 
and a, a fair amount of scrubbing and rinsing. And, and more scrubbing and rinsing. But finally, the pen nibs actually got really, really clean. I got pretty much all of the ink off of them. There's a little bit of corrosion there from just where water had built up and kind of rusted them out, but I got pretty much all the metal pieces almost completely free of ink and my handle is looking not like new, but a lot better. So overall, I would say the pen cleaner deep cleaning was a success. So that should pretty much cover you on your basics of how to use and take care of your nib pens. Nib pens are one of my favorite things to use because they are very versatile with different pen tips. You can get lots of different effects for all different kinds of types of art that you want to make. They're extremely durable. I've had the same handles for years and the nibs out take a lot of use before you have to replace them. And also they're just a ton of fun. Hopefully the techniques and the methods of maintenance that I've shown you will help you to have a lot of fun creating stuff with your own nib pens and take care of them for years to come. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If you like watching these videos of me telling you about different types of art and ways that you can make it on your own, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, and I'll see you next time. piece of metal. <coughs> oh my word. <coughs> oh, I felt that coming. <coughs> Am I done? Is it over? Oh. Mm. Okay. Let me try that again.